Park. Hello and welcome back everyone, I'm Diglo Buffalo and this is Let's Play Leather Goddesses of Phobos. When we last left off, we were in a bedroom in Cleveland. We had just retrieved the headlight that we need for the solution of this game. So, well, let's just move on since there's nothing else for us to take here. So let's go back downstairs. Teensy weensy house and let's look to the east garden. The house opens into a fragrant garden. A piece of sod has been recently planted and a clump of yellow bulbous flowers grows nearby. The flowers barely reach the trellis which rises behind them. You can re-enter the house to the west. Trent follows you. Let's look at the trellis. Not trellis. Trellis. The trellis is a tight lettuce of white wood. Though slightly wide, wider at the top, it's, it is approximately square in shape. Let's take the trellis. Taken. Okay. Now, as we read before, there's a piece of sod which has been recently planted. Uh, so let's lift the sod. You lift the corner. Before the sod drops back to the ground, you notice something dark. Now, it took me forever to figure out what to do with the sod. Because since I tried to lift it and you just lift a corner, I, I thought it would be impossible to just uh, move the sod by itself. So I tried to use everything that I came across in this game to move this piece of sod. But nothing helped. I tried to use the rake to kind of get leverage on it. Nothing. Well, actually, the only thing you really need to do is move sod. Moving the sod reveals a black circle. Well, the simple solution was the correct solution after all, and it took me forever to get to it. But since we're here, let's stand in circle. End of hallway. A few seconds later, you see Trent's big toe appear, followed by the imme almost immediately by the rest of them. So we're back in our quaint little prison. Well, uh, nothing to do here. We have to get back to Venus because now we can actually do something. So let's go back into the closet and stand in the circle in the closet. Jungle. A few seconds later, Trent's elbow appears and then he appears and the Venus flytrap is chasing after us again. But we don't want to be caught by the Venus flytrap because Again, as uh, jumping off a roof does, this gives us a, a severe case of death. So, not a good thing. So let's move east. Fork of sorts. Let's move east again. Holy tropism, the Venus flytrap loses interest, as it did before. But now we can actually do something about it. We can go back to the fork. And if we remember, it's a fork because it's got a big hole in the middle. So, uh, well, let's try and see if we can use that hole to our advantage. And create a little trap here. So we can put, or actually cover a hole with trellis. Not cov, it's cover. The trellis barely spans the hole. But of course, the trellis alone will not help us, so we have to hide the trellis in some way. So, let's put leaves on trellis. Leaves cover the trellis. Okay, so let's go back to our Venus flytrap. Have it follow us. Edge of a trellis is just visible under a whole bunch of leaves. Venus flytrap scurries along. You dash to the eastern side. So let's wait. Venus flytrap sidles closer. Wait. And again it sidles closer. Wait. And again it sidles closer. Never before has splintering wood sounded so sweet or tossed salad looked so lovely. The amazing fly flying flytrap tumbles into your flytrap trap, covered with leaves and bits of shattered trellis, giving the plant the amusing appearance of a tar and feather victim. All right. The flying flytrap tumbles into our flytrap trap. So that's one problem solved. 
again here it took me forever to figure out what to do because I figured uh, you can't just put the leaves on top of the trellis you have to put something over the trellis to so the leaves don't fall through the holes in the trellis at least I imagined the trellis to be so wide that the leaves would fall through the holes so I tried to put the tray on it the blanket the the, the, the sheet without before cutting it up and everything nothing worked until I finally figured out I could just put the leaves on the trellis so anyway that takes care of the flytrap but before we go check out what that uh what path that opened up for us let's go east to the clearing because this is the place where I like to drop all the things that I don't need anymore or actually hmm I was just thinking, yeah, one thing we want to do is uh, first, actually, let's go back here to the jungle and go west, which was the path that was blocked by the flytrap. Spawning ground. As if this hasn't already been rough a uh, rough enough day, you have stumbled upon a spawning ground for Venusian slime beasts. The ground is oozy with proto-slime. Fortunately, these beasts are still in the earliest and least deadly stage. Only one spot is free of slime, the black circle near the path to the east. Inexplicably, sitting next to the circle, untouched by time or slime, is a jar of ointment. Trent enters just a few steps behind you. So let's take the jar. Look at the jar. The jar of untangling cream is full and has some writing on it. Let's read the jar. The jar is marked untangling cream. Now... What can we do with untangling cream? Well, that's a very good question. So again, let's go back to the clearing. Let's check out our inventory. Actually, this was completely useless because um, I don't want to... Uh, because, of course, the untangling cream is part of a puzzle. And I don't want to kind of half solve the puzzle now and half solve the puzzle later. Because first I want to go to a different part of the game. So let's just leave it at that. All this part of going, getting the untangling cream now was pointless. But anyway, I apologize and let's move on. Not, I was, why was I writing dope? Because I actually wanted to write drop rope, condensed it into dope. So wicker basket we need, we don't need the painting. Drop the painting. We can't drop the rule book or the brass line cloth. Actually, can we drop the brass line cloth just for the hell of it? We'll have to remove the brass line cloth first. Remove. Boy, I'm not sure why I want to get naked in the middle of the Venusian jungle, but the brass loin cloth is so becoming. So, well, we don't want to remove it. So, it seems like the wicker basket contains a blanket. We need that. Scrap of paper, we don't need that. Drop paper. A matchbook, we don't really need that, but let's carry it so we just have the list of items. We can drop the can of stain. Uh, the odd machine, we need. The coin, we need. We can drop the rake. And while well, the canvas sack is actually useful for putting stuff in, so put all in sack. Well, it's just you know, a jar of untangling cream in the sack, but as I said, it's safe space in the inventory and we're going to need that space. So let's go back to the spawning ground. Let's save our game just to be on the safe side. And let's stand in the circle. Hold. You're in the cargo hold of a giant spaceship. A tiny viewport is set into the curving steel hull. An arched passageway leads in directions that will be uh, that we will arbitrarily call so south and southwest one item in the hold is a sword a potent weapon with a long hard blade of glistening steel a few seconds later you see trend snows appear followed almost immediately by the rest of them a radium powered grenade clatters against the deck you glimpse a shoddy uh, a shoddy why is it a shoddy figure it's a shadowy figure dressed in black slipping away Trent yells to hit the deck and hurls himself onto the grenade. A sickening explosion splatters Trent all around the room. Ew. As you struggle to control your shock and nausea, your eyes fill with tears. You hang your head in sorrow for a moment to honor your brave, loyal companion who gave his life that 
humanity might be safe from the terrible scourge of the leather goddesses of Phobos. So, let's see. So we're in a giant spaceship. There's a viewport. So let's look out. Viewport. You can see Saturn and her ample rings. Much closer, no more than 100 feet away, is a small spa passenger spaceship. Judging by the, by the steam blowing from her iron engine, she's preparing to depart. Which is a huge problem. Because uh, the ship will depart very shortly. And if it departs, it doesn't come back. So uh, if you don't solve the puzzle that involves that, that spaceship right now as far as i know you cannot come back and solve it later i had that problem i had i had done a first playthrough just mapping out everything just finding where everything was before worrying too much about solving the puzzles just to know what i had uh and what i could solve these puzzles with then i had a did a second playthrough actually trying to solve the puzzles but i had come through here the spaceship has taken had taken off and I was stuck because, well, it had taken off and I couldn't solve this one puzzle anymore. So, old games, very unforgiving. Anyway, let's take the sword, which might come in handy. And let's go south. Stable. This must be the flagship for the Leather Goddesses of Phobos main attack fleet, since this stable contains the Leather Goddesses of Phobos main attack fleet cavalry mounts. The most striking horse, a significant white stallion, a mag significant magnificent white stallion, is a magnificent white stallion. Oh my god, I apologize. It's late, I'm tired, and I can't read. Anyway, magnificent white stallion, their exits to the north and east. Uh, uh, West, not east. So, since we're here, why not get on the stallion? You are now on the stallion. Let's move east. Riding a proud mount forcefully. Uh, okay, this is ridiculous. I have to pay way more attention when I'm reading. Kick in your proud mount forcefully, and in the flank, you gallop down a long corridor, pulsing with light. Above the Above the echoes of the hoofbeats, you can hear, almost feel, the throbbing of mighty engines. After a minute of wild riding, at the main hatch. On the stallion. To the north, the main hatch of the flagship is closed. A long corridor leads east. Hanging by the hatch is a white, form-fitting thermos suit. Okay, let's get off our horse. You dismount. And since it here, it is here. Let's take the thermos suit and wear the thermos suit. You're now wearing the white suit. Let's open the hatch. Hatch swings open and north in space. You're floating in out outer space near a battleship to the south and a small passenger spaceship to the north. Hanging from the base of the long, potent-looking battleship are two pendulous springing fuel tanks. Saturn looms above, below, you. Her rings sparkling in the sunlight. A figure in black, doubtless the same person who tossed a grenade into the hold, is near the smaller ship. Uh, given his mean expression and characteristic black outfit, you mu it must be Thorbast, the chief assassin for the leather goddesses of Phobos. Thorbast is struggling with a young woman of wealthy garb and demeanor. Noticing you, he straps the woman to the hull of, a sm of the small passenger spaceship and jumps towards you, uh, stopping just a few feet away. With a chillingly evil grin, he draws a long, pointed sword. Ah, the escaped prisoner disposing of you will be a small but enjoyable feather in my cap. As he speaks, a foul odor wafts towards you. Well, let's smell the odor as if we didn't know better. Scratch and sniff spot number five. If you're watching this at home and you do own the game and the scratch and sniff card, by all means, play along with the scratch and sniff card. The rumors that Thorbast enjoys munching on hunks of raw garlic seem to be true. Let's hope he doesn't talk anymore. 
a bug-eyed monster, sort of a cross between a space squid and a humanoid tree, swims into view. Its hideous spark is covered with squirmy little suckers, and its branches wave about like tentacles. It takes one look around and heads straight towards the defenseless young woman. Thorbass takes advantage of your inactivity and launches a fierce attack. You dodge, avoiding the blade war, the blade more by luck than by skill. Well, it seems we're at a showdown with Thorbast. But before we get too far into it, let's end the video here. So for now, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next part. So until then, have a good one.